And what I'd like to do now is create yet another similar version that has the same effects arrangement, but allows me to play piano backgrounds you would like with acoustic piano, kind of a churchy Hammond, kind of a nice mellow set of strings, and then a Rhodes and a clav together to do kind of Rufus style. So the first thing you're going to want to do in the DMC editor is check your global settings. This is where you control things like the sustain pedal, the expression pedals, and the function buttons. So you can see here on common, the basic channel is one, which is also the upper channel, which is also channel one, which you can select from this channel list here when you're assigning any button. Oh, important to realize that basic channel, upper channel, and one are all the same thing on the Gemini. You can control the MIDI output port, so this is in case if you have like a Nord going through the top manual and the Gemini going through the bottom manual or the DMC going to something else. FC1 type is a half moon switch. You can also have dual foot switch or expression pedal, very simple. F1 and F2 have several different potential functions. They can change the octave on the upper and lower. They can be assignable to a PC or CC number. They can change the velocity after touch, or they can toggle the sustain between the two manuals. I think you can see already this is a bit of a flaw because you kind of want all of these, right? Right now I've got octave on both, so it changes the octaves on both manuals at the same time. It's a little awkward, but I've made it work. Here's where you define what your buttons are going to do. You can change these to snapshots, and this is a, another flaw. Buttons row 1 through 7 can either be assignable or snapshots. Now snapshots save on the fly. They save whatever arrangement of potentiometers and drawbars you have going. So you can imagine losing 7 buttons just to save on the fly, but not to be able to recall PC numbers with those buttons becomes a problem. Really, these snapshots either need to recall PC numbers with them, or we need one save on the fly button that snapshots whatever preset is currently called up. I can't quite figure out whether that's possible. I've only had this for about a month and a half, so I will follow up with another video if I figure out snapshots. Anyway, here's the upper channel, one. Lower channel is four because the VB3 mode transmits on three channels, so the Gemini's lower channel is always four. These are set to the internal port, which is where the Gemini plugs into the DMC. You can change the basic octave. You can add velocity, aftertouch, sustain, and the pitch modulation wheels. I've added it to both because I like using the pitch wheel for the clav and the synth, and I usually have the clav on the bottom and the synth on the top. But you can see you can also split if you're running other devices into the DMC. You split both of these. Now, one of the problems I have as well is that I've got the sustain pedal on both manuals. I couldn't really figure out which manual needed it and which didn't. So that's a little tricky, but you can have a little bit of fun with that once you get used to it. Like so, I've learned to have a little fun with that. Of course, any changes you make to global settings have to be written to the setup under library. So you can see that the PC number matches one of the presets. 34 is my clav. PC number matches that. It sends to lower channel for these all these four through sevens are the lower channel. All these one through threes are the upper channel. In this case, PC6 is the synth lead that I showed you in the synth video. All my effects are on 11 through 17. This is sending CC40, which is not an assigned number. I assigned it myself because there was nothing on the 40s. And this turns on and off the rotary as I showed in that setup I created. So we're gonna change a few things. The first thing we're gonna change is we're gonna find the presets that we want. And the first one we want is called Rock Piano. 
All right, rock piano is 53. We're going to keep the same send PC upper channel. We're going to change this to 53 and make sure to hit this green button to send. Now you don't need to be terrified about what will happen here because once I write this to a new setup, it'll preserve my old one. Now on the second one, I would like the more roomy piano, the Venice Grand. It's way the heck down here because it's the newest one. Here we go, 72. So, number two will be send PC 72. All right, and number three, I want to do a kind of generic mellow roads. Well, we've got Mark 1. Well, this Mark 1 is what I'm thinking of. It's 11. Number three will be 11. Oh, we've got two pianos. And now we want to prepare the rock piano number one. I would like to play with a kind of churchy Hammond. So number four is going to be lower channel, and we're going to find this churchy mellow Hammond that I created for background swells. Unfortunately, I didn't write down the drawbar settings, which is bad of me. Okay, here's 71 generic strings. So that'll go nicely with that Venice Grand. So number four here uh, for the lower manual will be 71. We'll send. Now I think I'm actually going to put the Farfisa here just to be able to play it. I don't have anything in particular I want to play with it. I made this setting called Farfing Around, and that's five. So we'll put five here. Sent. And then we're going to do Clav possibly the same for now i'm going to do the same 34 that i had actually let's do an auto walk clav that'll be a little fun and then we can play with that it'll be a little different so we'll do 12. okay i've got my presets here now one of the nice things is that i don't have to change the draw bars they're all set to the lower draw bars are set to the same numbers the same cc numbers as the upper draw bars so the Hammond will work just as well here. In this case, the drawbars are doing quadruple duty. They are going to be the Hammond drawbars. They are going to be some of, I believe, some of the settings for the strings. Let's take a look. I'm not sure if the engine is assigned. Yep, here we go. The level, attack, release, and filter for the strings are all there. They're also going to be the Farfisa switches and the Clav switches. Wow, quite a lot. And they're also going to work on effects as my last setup did. But one thing we are going to do here that is different is we are going to assign the half moon switch on FS, L, and R to the lower channel. Okay. So one thing we could do is we could assign EQ to these upper draw bars for the piano. Let's go ahead and see what kind of settings we have for piano. And it looks like the Venice Grand is, I believe, already assigned. So great. All our EQ, our level and attack and everything we can play with on the fly for the Venice Grand. Yeah, very weird. I don't know why it's not showing it here. On, there we go. It's because I had a different app up on my computer. So you can see I just completely messed with that. Okay, so I don't want to make too many changes. 11 is um, CC number 40, and let's look at the MIDI map over here. Home page, MIDI map. Okay, CC 40 is the... Rotary switch. Now, on the last setup, I had run stop on 13. You can see this. I don't need that now because I've assigned the half moon switch to the lower manual. On the last setup, I was playing the Hammond on the upper manual. On this one, it'll be on the lower manual. So here, I actually have a little room. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to assign the phaser 
for the upper manual roads here. You can see the phaser is assigned to 44. Now, this is going to be interesting because if you go two buttons over, you've got the phaser for the lower manual roads. Right? Oh, no. Sorry. Four buttons over. I'm a liar. So, but this is pretty cool. This button 13 will turn on the phaser for this roads that I've got set to number three on the upper. And then we can have some roads phaser with some clav on the bottom. I'll show you what I mean in just a second here, because what I want to do now is write this setup. Let's pick an empty spot, five. Let's write this to setup number five. And you can't see my DMC, but it's writing at the moment. Now what it's done, it's called this Gemini Funk, because that was the first setup I made. I'm going to call this Gemini Piano, because this is piano-centric. And we're going to say Piano Upper as a description. And now we can just drag and drop this on 3. Scary for a minute when they're there when everything disappears. Okay, we're in Gemini Piano. Let's load it. Recall setup number three. And you can load this from the front of the DMC by hitting exit and F1, F2. I see now my LED screen says Gemini Piano. Let's hear that rock piano with a little bit of Hammond on the bottom. Let's see if this works. So I was switching the half moon switch there, and it was not working on the lower manual, so we're going to check that. I see that these are both set to lower channel, so I'm not sure what's going on there, but just to be safe, we'll try setting them to 4, which is the lower channel. Sometimes if you tell it a different channel, that can help troubleshoot. And then let's go ahead and write. Let's try that now. One thing I also realized that to use the Hammond in this mode, I've also got to reassign all the percussion and chorus vibrato to the lower channel, or I won't have full. Hammond functionality. So there is a whole lot of homework, but you can see how I've created something that may, is maybe a little bit more flexible than I could have gotten elsewhere. And then here's some of the sounds possible with that setup I just created, that rock piano and that churchy Hammond to start with. <laughs> that Venice Grand, the more roomy piano, and some strings. clav with the wah at the top roads, dry roads for now. Let's switch. Let's turn the wah off. 
off on the clav. Sometimes you have to push the button twice when the setup first comes on, and I'm not sure why that is. Let's put the phaser on the roads. few cool combinations available there just by spreading everything out. Once again, I've got all the clav EQ switches, the Hammond, and the string variability controls down here on these bottom drawbars. There's no chorus anywhere, I'm sure you noticed, because I just don't care enough about having chorus. Even though the chorus is good in the Gemini, reverb's only available on the fly for pianos in my second setup. And there's no possible way to page through amp selections on the fly, which is a little frustrating because that's so crucial to the sound. A model amp sounds very different live than it does on headphones. Model amps are just so tricky. I think they're probably the worst part of any sort of digital modeling instrument. You kind of have to enjoy a good puzzle to do these setups. You only get a certain amount of potentiometers, drawbars, and buttons. It's not quite enough if you're used to an ord like me. It's actually a lot of fun, though, to figure out how to arrange it. I mean, my brain was just spinning for days and weeks on, well, how can I get the most out of this? And I love that I have the drawbars doing triple or quadruple duty. It's super fun. I'm planning one more setup that I'll probably record that uses all the drawbars and the two middle potentiometers for synth parameters. So, all in all, with 32 possible setups in the DMC, when I find a problem, I can try a new setup to address it. Switching between setups is super easy. Shift this middle button of the DMC parameter buttons and F1 to go down to the previous setup, F2 to go up to the next setup. The hard part is keeping track of everything you've changed and reassigned. Tape labels would help a lot with that. It also takes a little while to understand that you can change a lot as far as what's assigned where on the DMC. But the MIDI map in the Gemini, that will always remain the same. 